Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MFC light heavyweight Dwayne Lewis. Dwayne, how are you? I'm doing excellent, Matt. How are you? I'm doing good. Dwayne, you've been out of action for a while, because I know you had some injuries. What exactly were those injuries? I, uh, I hit my back a few weeks before, uh, like two and a half, three weeks before my last fight last February. So uh, right up until about October, I've been just recovering from that, uh, doing acupuncture, uh, physiotherapy, uh, chiropractic work, and uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been a long, tough road just to, just to get over that, but uh, right now I'm 100% and uh, looking forward to get back in the ring. Dwayne, there was a little bit of controversy in your last fight, whether it was a punch that caused the, the swelling under your eye, or it was a headbutt. What exactly happened? Do you remember at all what happened? Well, during the fight, obviously, and even uh, for a month afterwards, I, I didn't, I never did know what happened there, but, you know, given the injury, and uh, I watched the tape a few times since then, and I can tell you right now, it was not a headbutt that caused it, uh, even though the headbutt did happen, it was the right hand, it was, uh, if you watch the fight real closely, you'll see Jimmo's right hand, the first two finger knuckles, go right into my eye, it, uh, it pushes my head back, and then we come forward to a headbutt, <clears throat> so that punch was kind of more like a, Kind of more like a, like a, an eye poke, in a sense, but I mean, it was legal. It was a, it was a legal shot. And uh, like I said, those two finger knuckles went into my eye, pushed my eye in so far that it pushed my eye down through my orbital floor. It was actually my orbital floor that was broken, not my orbital bone. So it was it was a very serious injury because sometimes there's a lot of swelling and then we figure out it's not that serious, but this really was a very serious injury, correct? Uh, well... I don't know, man. I didn't, I didn't think it was that serious. You know, like I said, the orbital floor, it's, it's like an eggshell. Uh, so, I mean, it's very easily broken. It's, your body's made that way so that it doesn't traumatize your eye. <clears throat> it's made to fall down through like that. So, you know, the, the doctors fixed it up. I got a, a titanium mesh in there. I got cleared to fight uh, or go back to full contact activities uh, by April 2nd. So, it was only like a month and a half later. I was, I was cleared again to go back. So, it wasn't that bad. You're back in action at MFC 32 against Wilson Govea. How's training been going for the fight? Trainings are going good, man. Uh, the beginning camp was a little was a little rough. Uh, you know, the back was kind of stiff still. Still getting some bad tweaks. And uh, you know, I had to stay away from certain activities. But uh, as camp went on, uh, the back got stronger. And I'm in, I'm in great shape right now, man. I'm looking forward, so looking forward to getting in there and uh, going toe-to-toe with a, with a legend like uh, Govea. What are you expecting coming from him? Because he's on a three-fight losing streak. Are you expecting him to throw caution to the wind and you know try to take you out as soon as possible, or are you uh, expecting him to kind of you know just grind out a decision, kind of kind of lay on you and, and not really go for much and just play and not to lose? What are you expecting going into this fight? Well, I mean, like, uh, I don't expect Gavea to go in there and, and lay and pray. He's not that type of fighter. He's, he's got more class than that. That's for sure. Uh, you know, he's coming off a long way off as well, and he's coming off with a couple of losses, so, you know, I think he's going to come in and do what he does best. He's going he's to throw down hard, and he's going to, uh, to finish the fight early. He actually said in, in one of the interviews that uh, he wasn't looking so much to trade with me. He wanted to come in, put me, put me on my ass sort of thing, and uh, submit me right away, so I'm not sure if that's reverse psychology there or not, but uh, he, he has all intentions of uh, finishing this fight early. Without revealing too much, of course, what's your game plan going into the fight? My game's always always the same, man. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to try and keep it standing, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw bombs. And uh, if he wants to trade, then you know, that's, that'd, be, that'd be right up my alley, so to speak. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, man. I'm in shape. I'm hoping that if all else fails, I'm hoping that work the guy. He's, he's known the world after a round or two. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm, I'm planning on picking up the pace and going harder, so... We'll see, man. We're, we're going fast. It's, it's going to be fireworks, I think. And uh, I don't see this fight going anywhere near the five round that, that is scheduled for. I see it uh, no more two rounds at the most. With Ryan Jimmo now in the UFC, the light heavyweight belt being vacant, how many fights do you think you'll need to win in order to get a vacant title shot? Uh, I'm hoping maybe two wins. Should pop me right back up there. I mean, you know, I, I had a good, pretty good streak going there. The only guys I've lost to were... Uh, uh, Emmanuel Newton and Ryan Jim in the last three years, so you know I, I think uh, one or two more wins should put me right back into title contention. But uh, I'm not so sure that Jim was 
probably was vacant right now. I know he's got to the UFC, but who knows? He could be back after a fight or two. So uh, I haven't heard anything from Mac or NFC saying that the title is officially vacant yet. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Are you exclusive to the MFC, or can you fight in a different organization if an opportunity ever was to come up? Well, I'm still, I'm still in contract with the MFC. I, I signed uh, uh, you know, an exclusive, exclusive contract with those guys for four fights uh, a while ago. So, you know, I, I still got a couple of fights with them, and, uh, you know, I, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm not even looking to go anywhere else. Uh, the MFC has treated me like gold since, since I've been with them, and I've been with them longer than anyone else, actually. So... I love it there, man. They, they treat me good and put on good shows, and uh, I get good fights there. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy. Dwayne, do you have a prediction for the fight against Wilson Govea? I'm going to predict, uh, predict a KO or TKO uh, midway through the second round. Dwayne, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank? Anything you want to say to the fans? Yeah, for sure, man. I just want to thank my fans for, for their support. Uh, especially the guys here around Fort Mac, where, where I'm from here. Um, I got a, a, a boatload of guys coming down again, you know, traveling that five-hour trip down on these icy roads just to, just to watch me fight. So big shout-out to those guys. Thank you for the support. And my sponsors, I've got uh, Stare, Stare Down Fightwear, uh, Heritage Ernie Davidson. I've got uh, Bowman's MMA, KO Reps, <clears throat> uh, Birch Mount, and Carmax, uh, and also the Edmonton Rush and... Uh, Western RV. I want to thank all those guys for their support. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm looking to put on a good show on the 27th and uh, make sure everyone tunes in because it's, it's going to be fireworks. Okay, Dwayne. Thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck at MFC 32 against Wilson Govea. Awesome, man. Thank you very much.